Welcome to Commander Tilt. My name is Clark. Just a little bit about my channel. I create gameplay of my Commander decks. They fight each other with the hopes and the idea that perhaps I will be able to determine which of my decks is the strongest and most powerful. The other thing about my channel is I characterize my commanders. I give them characters and voices and I just kind of play around with them and see what would they actually talk like if they were the actual commanders. This is the finals and I did something a little bit different on the finals. I've actually already done the filming of, I, I started recently filming all of the fights hoping to pick out the best one to show you uh, because I didn't really want to ever show a game that was mana blocked or a deck that had a lot of trouble getting off the ground. So I've recorded all of the games of this final and in this one I'm actually going to go ahead and edit and put, put together all of the games so I, I thought to myself would people really want to watch all of the games of a, of a final series and then I thought about professional sports and how yes yeah I want to see all the games of a finals and honestly the games that I played were pretty interesting I was having a hard time picking which one would be the best and most characteristic of the decks because they were all interesting and had a lot of interactions so this is the first game mind you it doesn't matter who wins this game, there will be another one because it's a best of three competition. But this, whoever wins this battle has a leg up on the overall competition because it is a best of three. So, here we go with the battle. <clears throat> I hope you enjoy! I'm just going to go over this briefly in case you don't know. Feather is a 3-4 legendary creature angel with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Feather is a fantastic commander because it gives Boros a chance at card draw or at least card stability. Joda, Archmage Eternal, is a 4-3 legendary creature human wizard with flying as well. His text says, you may pay Huber, which is white, blue, black, red, green, rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. The Wikipedia sites list Joda as a, an, a mage that has lived for thousands of years, 4,000 years, I think it says, and he's, I always characterize him as a funny guy, because I have to imagine somebody who's lived 4,000 years has a hard time keeping everything straight in his brain, because that's an awful long time to live. Feather's opening hand was Spawning Breath, Sheltering Light, Borrowed Hostility, Launch the Fleet, Rogue's Passage, Windscarred Crag, and One Mountain. Joda's opening hand was Clone Legion, Rampant Growth, Esper Panorama, Naya Panorama, Encroaching Waste, One Forest, and One Island. Joda won the die roll. Let's get started. Okay, so Teferi is always on my case. I know Huberg is white, green, pink. Well, I, I don't know. Teferi is always on my case about this because I can't remember. But I've been experimenting and I discovered a new set of Huberg. It's pink, purple, orange, yellow, and gray. We're gonna see how this new kind of Huberg works in this battle about halfway through. If my spells continue to cast with this new kind of Huberg, I may have to rename it. Um, let's see, what would it be? Pink, purple, orange, yellow, gray, popo, oh yug. Popo, popo yug. Yeah, that sounds cool, I think it'll catch on. Right, my draw is gonna be etched monstrosity. I'm gonna throw down a forest and I'm gonna pass the turn. My first draw is Emergent Zone. I will play a wind scarred crag, gaining a life, and I pass the turn. My draw is a forest. I'm gonna put down the Esper Panorama. Then I'm gonna tap two for rampant growth. That lets me search up a basic land and get me a plains, and I'll pass the turn. My draw is Sunblast Angel. I will play a mountain, and then tapping two, I will play Spawning Breath, hitting the Planeswalker for one, and I gain Eldrazi Spawn. Then I shall pass the turn. I shall untap. My draw for turn is going to be the Command Tower. Next, throw down the Naya Panorama. 
love the view of this one. Then I'm gonna tap two mana, sacrifice both of the panoramas, fetching up two more lands. I'll get a mountain off the Naya and an island. No, I kidding, I'm gonna get a swamp off the Esper. Then I'll pass the turn. My draw is Burrow Signet. I will play Emergence Zone as my land drop. I will tap two mana for the Burrow Signet. Then I will sacrifice the Eldrazi spawn to activate the Burrow Signet. Tapping the Wind Scarred Crag for white, I have enough mana to play Feather the Redeemed! Then I will pass the turn. Okay, I'm gonna untap. A draw for turn is gonna be a Tranquil Thicket. Next, I'm gonna put down an island. That gives me Jeskai and one for Judo! Now I'll cycle that Tranquil Thicket and I get Blatant Thievery. That spell is epic! Passing the turn. My draw will be open the armory. I will put down Rogue's Passage as my land drop. Then I will tap one white for launch the fleets. Two arms! Two arms! Feather will attack with the soldier I just recruited. Oh, what you doing there? I will cast Borrowed Hostility, selecting to pump Feather plus three plus well, I, O. I guess I'm gonna put Joda in front of that soldier and take it out. Feather hits for six commander damage, and I will pass the turn. In my turn, I'm gonna untap. My draw for turn is gonna be Evolving Wilds. That place is crazy. I'll put down the command tower for my land. Then I've got Huberg set up. Take a look at this. I'm gonna cast me Blatant Thievery. Feather Girl, you better come on over here or to my side of the battlefield. Yeah, we get along great, don't we? Oh yeah, I forgot. Since, since you were tapped before, I'm gonna leave you tapped. Moving to combat. Jonah's coming at your face, baby. Four commander damage. Passing the turn. My draw will be another mountain. I will tap six for some last angel, destroying all tapped creatures. Well, guess I'm heading back to my man cave. Then I pass the turn. First to untap. tap. My draw for turn is Azuri's Predation. I think I got me enough mana now after dropping this forest to go ahead and cast Judo! My draw is Soul Ring. I will tap a colorless mana for Soul Ring. Next, I will tap two for Open the Armory. I search out Sunforger and put it in my hand. Next, I will tap the Soul Ring and another mana for the Sunforger. Two arms! Two arms! The Sunblast Angel will hit for four damage. I will pass the turn. I'll take the damage. Next, I'm going to untap. A draw for turn is Spectra Ward. I'm going to cast Spectra Ward on myself. Protect myself from everything that is. Next, I'll go ahead and sacrifice that Evolving Wilds and fetch me up a swamp. Moving to combat, I'll swing with Joda at your face. First, I will untap. My draw is Maximize Velocity. I will tap the mana for Feather the Redeemed. Then I will pay for Maximize Velocity, giving Feather haste and plus one, plus one. Two arms, two arms! Next, I will pay for Borrowed Hostility, again selecting plus Got three, no plus zero. Blockers. Feather and Sunblast Angel hit for 11 total damage, including seven commander damage. First, I'll untap. Hmm. My 
My draw for turn is going to be primordial sage. I'm going to go ahead and tap Popoyug for Clone Legion. Get me a copy of everything on the opposite side of the field. I'll put Feather down first, and then Sunblast Angel. Gonna destroy all them tapped creatures. Kapow, kapow! Now I got my own little army of angels over here. Moving to combat, I'll swing with Joda. So that six commander damage coming at your face. I'll throw the encroaching waste down and pass. My draw for turn is Gilded Lotus. I will tap five colorless for the Gilded Lotus. I have six mana open, but Feather costs seven, so I pass the turn. Okay, first I'm gonna untap. My draw for turn is gonna be Fork in the Road. Who would leave a fork in the road? I'm not really all that sure, but I'll cast that spell. Give me a island in a forest. Forest, you're going to the graveyard where the beach is at my be. Put the islands down, then I'll cast that Primordial Sage. Moving to combat, the girls and me are gonna attack. Take a look at this. Six more commander damage on top of the 16 is a total of 22 commander damage and victory is mine! There you have it, the first game is in the books and Joda has taken the first victory. I have to admit, I, I, I being human, I make mistakes occasionally. When I first recorded this video, I forgot Spectre Ward adds plus two plus two. I just in my head thought it was a protection spell. So I was calculating the commander damage at four instead of six. And what happened was Joda kept attacking and attacking, but the accrued damage didn't add up to the 22. And so Feather had one more turn. And in the next turn, Feather won because I was able to cast Feather attached Sunforger, I was able to hit for lethal commander damage. But when I went to editing, I realized I'd made the mistake with Spectra Ward. So I went back and changed all the totals and realized that Feather didn't get her last turn, that Joda had already won with commander damage. So just goes to show you that how difficult commander is to play sometimes because there is just so many different variables hitting at all times. So now we move on to the second battle. We'll see who wins that one. If Joda wins again, there won't even be a third battle. But if Feather wins, you'll see a third battle. So I sure hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you so much for watching. There has been thus far nobody joined my Patreon page, and I sure hope to change that soon. Thank you so much. Remember to like and subscribe. Three planeswalkers were walking down the beach. It was Nisa, Rowan, Kenrith, and Chandra. They're riding through the desert, and about two hours later, their vehicle dies with no gas, and they're forced to travel to their destination on foot. Now, they're planeswalkers. I know it doesn't make any sense, but whatever, they decided to walk, and they all agreed to carry something. Nisa says, I'm going to bring the canteens of water. Chandra says, I'm going to take this large beach umbrella. Rowan, who's a blonde, she somehow rips off the car door. And Chandra says, hey, why did you take that whole car door? To which Rowan replies, so I can roll down the window in case it gets too hot.